video number nine, we saw how to control the stepper motor and change its direction with the press of a button. The next thing I wanted to do was to be able to control it similarly to the Arduino stepper.h library. While trying to learn to do this, I posted a comment on the microchip forum and Dan1138 posted up the code on his GitHub page that did exactly what I was wanting it to do. This is Dan's GitHub page where the stepper motor software is made available. It is already going through a number of uh, adaptations and has been improved to include homing. This will be covered in a later video when I have more time. So once again, I would like to thank Dan for the work he's done and assisting me in getting this far with this program. So here in the main C file, you can see a representation of the PIC 16F676 and which pins are being used to supply the stepper motor module. And in this case, it's the ULN2003 module, which is cheaply available either on eBay or other sources. Compared to Dan's diagram, I have changed some of these because he was showing the pin allocation for the actual ULN2003 chip going to the stepper motor. So next we'll look at the pragmas. Basically we're using the internal int RCIO for the clock and we've got the master control clear is on. The rest are turned off and you'll also see I'm using include xc.h library because we will be using delays. Next I use the define x frequency now this is different to what you've seen in the past and I put the brackets and inside the brackets I've set the frequency of 4 megahertz but we've made it the UL at the end of it and that basically is making it an unsigned long. In the past without the brackets and the UL it would just be a integer. This can affect the code especially when you start going up into faster frequencies with different picks. Next, we're going to create a function to initialize the pick. This will get called void main void function. So in line 50 of the code, you can see we've got incom equals zero. And this is used to turn off the interrupt. The incom register contains various enabler and flag bits for the timer row register overflow and also port A changes and external on pin RA2 interrupts. In line 51, you can see the PIE1, and this is set to zero, and this turns off the peripheral interrupts. More details on the two mentioned registers can be found on my GitHub page, which will be linked in the video afterwards. The next setting we see is line 53. And we've got cmcon equals 0x07. And this is used to turn off the comparators. The comparator module, more details can be found on page 39 of the data sheet. Basically, the PIC16F676 chip has one analog comparator. The inputs are multiplexed with the RA0 and RA1 pins. In line 54, we see that the VRCON, which stands for the Voltage Reference Control Register, has been set to 0x00, and that is basically setting everything to off. More details can be found on page 44 of the data sheet about this register. Next, in line 56, you'll see we've got the ADC on 1, and this has been set to 0x10, and that is set in the frequency clock divided by 8 as the ADC clock source. More details can be found about the analog to digital converter module on page 47 of the data sheet. You then go into line 57 of the code and here you can see the ADC on 0 is set to 0x80 and that is used for write justification in the external VREF select channel. Next in line 58, you can see we've set ANSEL equals 0x03, and that's used to set pins RA0 and RA1 
as analog inputs and all the other RA pins are set to digital. In line 59 you can see the ADC con 0 bits dot ADO on equals 1 and this basically is converting the module is now operating. The next line of code in 60 is ADC con O bits go underscore N done equals 1 and that is setting up the conversion cycle in progress. More details about that can be found in page 47 of the data sheet. We then go to line 63 and we've got an underscore delay underscore milliseconds of 500 milliseconds. This is to wait for the making the PGC and PGD outputs. I believe this is used for using a debugger with possibly other chips. I'm not 100% certain why this is here. In line 66, you can see we're setting the optional register to 0x51. So on page 32 of the data sheet, you can see here we're setting bits 0 to 2 at 001, which is calling up the 1 to 4 ratio. The PSA was setting up as prescale as assigned to the time row module. The TOSE is set to 0 increment on low to high transitions on RA2. We're setting the TOC to 0, which is internal structure cycle clock. Int EDG was setting as 1, which is interrupt on rising edge of RA2 pin. And RAPU is set to 0, which is port 8 pull ups are enabled by individual pull latch values. In the next line, we're setting up the WPU register, and that equals 0x3c. This is turning off the weak pull ups on pins RA0 and RA1. Then we move on to the TRIS A register, and we're going to set that to 0xff, and that is basically setting all ports A. As inputs. Then in the TRIS C register we're setting that to 0x30 which sets port C RCO to RC3 as outputs. We then go to port C and we set that to 0 which turns off all the outputs on C. And that then completes the function. You can see when we come to our main void main void the first thing that gets called is the int underscore pick function. So that sets up the pick ready for us to be working with. The next thing we need to do in our code, and here you can see we've got void underscore interrupt, closing the brackets, ISR handler void. This function has got nothing set within it, so it's not going to actually do anything, but it's used by the time of zero. So once it gets to the 255, it will set the flag the timer as one. The next thing we've got is this function here. You'll notice we've got void stepper motor int 16t count then unit 8t weight. So the function is expecting us to give it two values for them variables. Count is a 16-bit signed integer. A positive value sets the stepper motor in a clockwise direction and a negative value in the anti-clockwise direction. Weight is an 8-bit unsigned integer and is used for the number of time row events to wait until the next step. The count and the weight variables are set here in the while true loop. So here you can see we've got a call called stepper motor and inside the brackets we've got 4076 followed by 4. So this is setting the stepper motor in a clockwise direction, 4076 steps, and the weight value has been set to 4, which basically is 4.09 milliseconds per step. Now in theory, these are the only values you would need to be altering if you were to use this code. You do not need to worry about any of the above items. And here you can see I'm setting the value as a minus 2038 steps with a value of 2. And that's just going to send it basically half a turn in the anti clockwise direction. 
with a 2.48 milliseconds per step. So in theory, this is going twice as fast as the previous lines of code. So the stepper motor function, you've seen where it's getting its values, but what we have now is a static unit 8 state equals 0. So this, you can see, is we're going to create an array shortly. Here we've got static consistent unit 8, half steps, and we're using an array, and it's got eight elements in it. And these are the values here for controlling the port C, values for each of the pins. So here you can see we're using OX01, and that is going to basically have pin RCO high, and the other pins will be low. And then it will, we've got all the other seven values there. And I also set up a unit 8 delay. The first thing we're going to use is the do loop. And here you can see we've got if count is greater than 0, port C equals half step state. We then set state minus minus, and that is setting the value down by 1. We then have this here, which is state and equals OX07. This is a bitwise operator that performs a bitwise AND between the variable state. And the hexadecimal value OX07 is binary, is represented as 0001111, which means that the operation will only keep the three least significant bits of the state variable and set all the other bits to zero. We then have count minus minus which is knocking the count. So in other words, we've done one step, knock it down, and then it will go back through the loop until it reaches zero. So just to recap on this line, this is ensuring we stay within the eight elements of our array. We then have an else if statement, which is count is less than zero. And basically we've got a similar thing set up here, but going in the opposite way. And finally, the last thing that happens within our function is we have this last few lines of code, which is if weight is greater than zero, delay equals weight. We then have the do while loop, and that is int combit dot toif equals equals zero. And that's basically waiting for the interrupt flag to be set as one. And that will happen when time of zero rolls over after reaching 255. We then would set the incom bit, again TOIF, is equal to zero. So that's restarting the timer. And then we have delay equals delay minus one. And finally, we have another while loop, which is delay is greater than zero. And the final while loop we have is count is not zero. And that is the end of that function. So after each call of this, so if when we come to this one, it'll go through the same function, but it will use a different set of parameters for that function. And that's the code. And as I say, I'd like to thank Dan for the work that he's done creating this for us. You'll be able to find this code in the description and it will be linked to my GitHub page and I will also put a link to Dan's page. He has now made it with a homing button which takes this beyond what I could do with the Arduino stepper.h file.